Stem Cell Technologies' customized hematopoietic CFU assay training course is designed to help address specific research challenges that you may have and to standardize the CFU assay procedure at your facility. Part 1. Receiving and Preparing the Assay Materials Open your course package upon receipt and ensure all components are included as indicated on the pack list. Reagents and cells will be packaged in a styrofoam container separate from the dry goods. Any deviation from the shipping conditions should be immediately reported to our education department. Store the reagents under the appropriate conditions. Failure to do so could drastically affect performance. Cells should be stored in liquid nitrogen at minus 135 degrees Celsius. Methacolt and IMDM with 2% FBS should be stored at minus 20. You will also require additional materials and equipment. Refer to the technical manual for human CFU assays using Methacolt for additional information. Proper culture conditions are critical for optimal CFU growth. We recommend the use of a water jacketed incubator that includes a water pan in the chamber. Best practices include the routine monitoring of both the temperature and carbon dioxide levels within the incubator. One day prior to assay setup, review the protocol to ensure you fully understand it. Transfer the Methacult and IMDM from the freezer to the fridge to thaw overnight or thaw reagents at room temperature for a few hours on the day of the assay. Do not thaw reagents at 37 degrees Celsius. On the day of the procedure, prepare the biosafety cabinet by disinfecting it with 70% ethanol or isopropanol and place all reagents and equipment into the cabinet. Refer to the CFU assay setup worksheet for detailed instructions on the procedure. Part 2. Cell Preparation Take time to familiarize yourself with the following definitions that will be used throughout this video. The cell stock is the mononuclear cell sample washed with IMDM with 2% FBS. The viable cell concentration is the nucleated cell concentration of the cell stock multiplied by the percent viability. The 10 times plating density is the cell concentration used to set up the CFU assay with a predetermined number of viable cells. The cell stock is diluted in IMDM to equal 10 times the final cell plating density. The final plating density is the number of viable cells per volume of semi-solid culture medium per well. Aim to complete the entire CFU procedure within one hour. Remove the vial of cells from liquid nitrogen and thaw quickly in a 37 degrees Celsius water bath. Holding on to the vial, draw a figure eight in the water. Do not leave cells unsupervised and take care not to submerge the vial cap. The cells are ready when there is only a small piece of ice left in the vial. This should take approximately two minutes. Wipe the outside of the vial with 70% ethanol or 70% isopropanol and place it in the biosafety cabinet. Using a 2 milliliter serological pipette, gently transfer cells into an empty 15 milliliter polystyrene tube. Slowly add 10 milliliters of IMDM dropwise while swirling the tube for approximately one minute. Be sure to add the medium slowly as the cells are fragile after thawing. Invert the tube one to two times to mix the sample. Centrifuge at 300 times G for 10 minutes. Carefully discard the supernatant by aspirating or pipetting. Do not pour off. Resuspend the cells in the remaining medium by flicking the bottom of the tube. The cell suspension should be homogeneous and clump free. If you observe clumps or stringiness in the sample, please record this on your CFU assay worksheet. Add two milliliters of IMDM to the cell stock. Using a two milliliter serological pipette, measure the total volume of the cell stock and record this value on your worksheet. Take caution not to introduce air into the cell stock while pipetting. You will now perform two cell counts, a nucleated cell count and a viable cell count. Use procedures that have been validated in your institution using either a hemocytometer or an automated cell counter. Ensure that automated cell counters are calibrated to count nucleated cells only. Red blood cells should be excluded. 
suggested procedures for manual counting methods are shown in detail in our video, How to Perform Cell Counts with a Hemocytometer, available on our website. Record the nucleated cell concentration in the format of 10 to the power of 6 cells per milliliter on your worksheet. Calculate the percent viability of the cell stock. Using the equation shown, divide the viable cell count by the sum of the viable and non-viable cell counts and multiply this value by 100%. Record the percent viability on your worksheet. Preparing the 10 times plating density. Determine the volumes of cell stock and IMDM required to make the recommended volume of the 10 times plating density. Refer to Table 1 on your CFU assay worksheet for the 10 times plating densities and the recommended volumes you're required to prepare. Here is an example. This calculation will use the nucleated cell concentration and the percent viability recorded, as well as the recommended 10 times plating density referenced on the CFU assay worksheet. First, calculate the viable cell concentration. In our example, this value is 1.3 times 10 to the power of 6 cells per milliliter. Next, calculate the volume of the cell stock required. In our example, the volume is 0.115 milliliters. Finally, the volume of IMDM required will be 0.885 milliliters. Prepare 1 milliliter of the 10 times plating density by gently mixing the cell stock and IMDM. Part 3 Cell Inoculation Smart Dish 6 Well Plates can be used as an alternative to traditional 35 mm dishes. Smart Dish Cultureware is required for imaging and the automated counting of colonies with stem vision. For duplicate assays, add 0.3 milliliters of 10 times plating density to a pre aliquoted 3 milliliter methacult tube. This 1 to 10 ratio of cells to medium gives the correct viscosity to ensure optimal CFU growth and morphology. Using a 10 times plating density to prepare the final plating density reduces pipetting errors. Vortex vigorously for 4 seconds and let stand for at least 5 minutes. Take this time to prepare the culture wear. Do not use a pipette to dispense methacellulose medium, as the volume will not be accurate. Use a 3 milliliter lure lock syringe attached to a 16 gauge blunt end needle to dispense methacult. First, prime the syringe by drawing up 1 milliliter of methacult. Depress the plunger to expel the medium and any air back into the tube. To plate dishes using a blunt end needle and syringe, we recommend to first draw up to 2.4 milliliters, then dispense 1.1 milliliters into the first well, down to the 1.3 milliliter mark, and finally dispense another 1.1 milliliter into the second well, down to the 0.2 milliliter mark. This is more accurate than drawing up only 1.1 milliliters and dispensing to the zero mark. It will also help you to avoid dispensing bubbles onto the dish. Use a new syringe and blunt end needle between duplicates to prevent contamination. After plating the wells, cover and gently rotate the smart dish in a slow, circular movement. This will ensure that the medium is distributed evenly in each well. Fill the interwell space of the smart dish with four milliliters of sterile water and cover. Depending on your ambient humidity levels, you may also add 4 milliliters of sterile water to any remaining empty smart dish wells. Fill four 35 millimeter dishes with sterile water. Leaving them uncovered, place them inside a 245 millimeter square tissue treated culture dish along with the smart dish. Cover the square dish with the lid. The square tissue treated culture dish can hold up to three smart dishes and four water dishes. Incubate at 37 degrees Celsius, 5% carbon dioxide, and 95% humidity for 14 days. For detail on optimal culture conditions, refer to part one, receiving the kit and preparing materials. For more information on the CFU assay setup for your custom course, contact our education department.